AIR. You describe what you want in a prompt and a few seconds later you will have an amazing image that tries to represent what you ask. But it can't really generate complex images that match what you were actually envisioning. Or can it? No, by itself it can't. How about you using it though? That's exactly what we're gonna learn today. By taking ideas and turning them into final images with AI and human skills. First step, planning. In this step, we will think about how we tackle the process of bringing this sketch into life. What does the image need? What can we provide as help? And how much time are we willing to spend on it? Each sketch will need different things. Some might be easier than others. With time and experience, this planning step will become second nature. But for now, it is really important. Let's look at these images and see what challenges might arise when creating them. This image presents multiple characters in a beach. And to make it even harder, I want them to be specific characters from the series Konosuba, where these two will be Aqua and Megumin, and the dude on the right will be Kazuma. For this we will need posing. Even though we have a sketch, I'm not sure it will understand the pose that we're looking for. So we will need to use the open pose model. This background will be easy to create, but if we really want to be precise, we will need to use the segmentation model. We can add the sketch as a scribble model just to help a little with the overall image. To tackle the multiple characters issue, we will need the extension Layton Couple. I will explain how to install it in, in just a second. This will allow us to separate the image in different prompts and mix them together with more accuracy. Unfortunately, it is pretty meh with Loras, so we will need to do that later with him painting. The second image shows high complexity in terms of depth, as there is an object literally attacking the camera, while the main subject shoots at a target practice without touching the guy with a sword. Obviously, we will need a good depth map for this, to use with the depth model. Probably, we will need an edge detection model like Kani to create the sword and the gun somewhat correctly, and again, open pose. Finally, latent couple. It is very unlikely that the sword or bullet get generated correctly, so I will try to add them with Photoshop later on in the image and then fix it with AI. This image presents various challenges, the first being the perspective and the multiple characters. It will be a shot from above with a man facing the enemy volleyball team. We will most definitely need open pose for this, but it is likely that it doesn't really get the perspective right. Using the depth model could be helpful here, but it takes too much time to create a good depth map. Segmentation will help us define what is ground and what is people, as well as probably the ball. We will use the sketch as a scribble and if it doesn't work we will switch it with something else like the depth map. We will of course use latent couple to try to get the best possible character results. Then another problem will be the net. It is probable that Staple Diffusion doesn't know what to do here. We will probably need to fix it with photo bashing. This is a little more complex as there are multiple elements and we don't want them to interfere with each other too much. We can approach this by creating multiple images and then combining them. But first we will try this. A segmentation model, a scribble model with the sketch that we have and we could use open pose to see where the face of the thumbnail would go. This image will need latent couple mainly for the robot and background. And next, step 2, creating the references for control net as well as the masks for latent couple. By the way, keep in mind that this is my current workflow, so it could change in the future and it is also not a to-do list. If you have some other workflow that works for you, make sure to share it in the comments below and let's look together for a super workflow. I may pin down one of your comments if I think it may help others. I will ask you to install some extensions, skip this step if you think you won't need them. First, Open Pose Editor. This is an easy to install extension and it makes it really simple to create open pose references for ControlNet. You can detect a pose from an image and then correct what it doesn't get right. You can also input a background image and then pose it yourself following it. You can just go to the extensions tab, click on available and look for open pose. There is the open pose editor and the 3D open pose editor. You can install both since one of them can pose in 3D and has options to pose hands and feet. I'll be using the 2D one as it is faster and easier to use. Now go to installed and click apply and restart UI. Latent couple. There are two different extensions with the same name here, so make sure you only install one of them. To install it, go to the extensions tab, install from URL and paste the text I'll leave in the description. Then click on apply and restart. Once it has restarted, close the console and after you reopen it, you will have to do the following. Open the CMD as an administrator, clicking here. When you open the CMD, type CD and a double dot, then hit enter. You will probably have to do it a couple of times until it doesn't let you do it anymore. If your install is in the local disk or the C disk, now just type CD, double dot and copy your stable diffusion path with 
which will be up here. Enter again and now you type this, which is also in the description. If you don't have it in the C disk like me, then the process will be the same, but here you will type the disk name that you have it on. So for example, in my case, D. Now CD and the path. Here you will paste the other text. Now just run Stable Diffusion again and it should be working fine. Of course, you will also need ControlNet, so watch this video if you haven't installed it yet. And with all the extensions installed, let's begin. Generally, I just make a quick sketch and then take a photo of it. Import it into Photoshop and make it so the contrast is high enough to get almost only black and white. Then I cut the thumbnails to make sure they are 16 by 9 by creating a rectangle with those dimensions. If you don't have an initial sketch or don't know how to create a base image to act as one, watch this video right here. I'll explain all methods to create a good starting base no matter your skill set. And now, based on the planning we've done previously, we will make different references to input into ControlNet. For the first image, we will need open pose, sec and scribble. So let's open our recently installed extension, click on input background image and then we will choose our sketch. Since it will not detect the poses correctly, let's just do it manually. This part up here is the head and the blue line represents the neck. If you want a face, keep in mind that the interior circles will go in the eyes and the exterior ones will go on the ears. Then the joints here are pretty intuitive. The shoulders, the elbow, the wrist, not the hand, the wrist. Then the point where the legs will start, the knee and the start of the feet. I hide the parts that won't be visible, like all of Kazuma's body and the other side of the girl's bodies. You can insert new rigs by clicking the add button. I usually just download the image just in case I want to edit it later. Here's a neat little trick to create more accurate backgrounds. Remember that segmentation had a Google document with what each color means? Well, we can take those colors and paint them in to easily create what we want. You can click Ctrl F to search for what you're looking for and to see if it is understood by the segmentation model. In this case, I'll just take sky right here. Copy this color code and in Photoshop paste it in right here. Now we will be painting with the sky color. Then I'll do the same for the water, as I saw it was an option, and then the sand. Also, I'll make a quick mask for the humans on the scene, as segmentation understands that as well. Later on I found out that it will try to follow the shape more than I was expecting. And finally, I'll paint the sun umbrella. What? I, I didn't? Oh, never mind then, I forgot, I will add it once this is over. And now we will also use this to create the latent couple mask. I'll create three sections, one for each character. Painting in bright saturated colors so it is easier to see. Keep these masks white and not too precise, and use a hard brush without transparency or fade. Also, add a white background. For the second image, I'm gonna take a more complex approach, 3D modeling. This image has some depth complexity, so I'll solve that by rendering a real depth map of this scene. I downloaded and duplicated a male model, then using the sketch as a reference, I posed both models into a somewhat matching stand, moving their positions in relation to the camera in a way that would be understood, and I did not care about the camera angles that weren't seen in the render view. Also modeled with basic shapes, the sword and gun. The sword was my main issue in terms of depth, so I needed to get that right. Then I added the targets and rendered, outputting obviously the depth map, and I will use this map for canny or soft edge too. Again, I'll make the reference image for open pose. And finally, latent couple. See that I didn't leave much space for the background. This will make it so the generations don't have a very cohesive background most of the time, but we will fix that later. And then we have the volleyball image. Even creating the open pose reference was hard, as the perspective is really weird. Didn't focus too much on the secondary characters and instead tried to get the main character as best as I could. Also ended up not needing a death map, which is nice. Created a segmentation map this time too, for the people, the ball and the floor. There isn't a color that defines net but I painted it with a pole so it knew it wasn't part of the ground. And this time I refined this sketch with Photoshop a little so it had cleaner lines on the main character. For the last image I tried a fast open pose, segmentation, latent couple and scribble. It didn't end up working as I expected so I moved into image to image in the future by photo bashing. Once we have all our control and models it's time for step 3. Iterating. This means inputting everything into stable diffusion and then generating over and over again and then prompting or playing with the weights of the control net in order to get what we want. For this, we will drag our latent couple mask in here, then adjust the size of your desired image and click I've finished my sketch. Don't worry if it doesn't let you input the exact size you wanted, as long as it is close enough, we chill in. On general prompt, we will write our desired background. For example, in the first image, I typed 
anime style illustration of a beach. Beach umbrella, which I didn't realize I hadn't made a sec sketch for it, ocean, etc. Next, down here, you have the colored masks, prompt individually for each part of the image. I tried using Loras here, but it didn't work. So, if you're looking for a specific character, I'd recommend describing it without the use of Loras here. The result doesn't have to match the real thing, but the closer it is, the easier it will be to inpaint later. Here I'll leave you a few frames of how the prompt actually looks like. When you're done, hit the prompt info update, and then you will see that your positive prompt is now separated by the word and. You know what this does. Time to input our control net references. Depending on the the accuracy of your references, you may want to use a higher or lower control weight. For example, I want the segmentation model to be used as a way to understand where I want what, but not the specific shape of it. So I will lower its strength. Then open pose can be fairly high on control weight, as it is pretty well done this time. I want my scribble model to mark a little bit of the composition, but it is a really rough sketch, so I'll put it at a really low strength. For starting or ending weight, I follow this general rule of thumb. If your model is aimed to help the composition, but can hurt the details of the image in the render phase, I will lower the ending weight. To what point? It will depend on the problems it can give. If it is really problematic, then take it out as soon as the composition is decided, like at 25% of total steps. If your model is aimed only to change or add stuff, but you don't want it to affect the composition, you could put the starting strength at 10 or 15%, even though I usually don't touch the starting strength for much. If, like a well-posed open pose, it is aimed to help on the overall generation, you can just keep them both at one. Finally, click generate and see what you get. Adjust your prompt and weights accordingly. We are not looking for a final image here, not even close. We want good shapes and, if possible, colors, to help us later when we inpaint aiming for the real final results. For the first image, I started with this, where the two girls are basically blobs and the dude looks like Giga Chat. For the second image, I used this robot thing with a nonsensical background. The hardest one for me was actually the volleyball image, because AI made it so the dude spiking was looking at the camera all the time, or created different balls. I ended up using this one with a blurry protagonist. And lastly, here you have examples of what the robot creepy thing was creating, even though at the end it made this, but it was too late. This can take more or less depending on the image you're looking for and the control net models you're able to use. Usually about 4 or 5 generations should be enough to get you a starting base. Some tricks you can use are changing the model to one that has a better chance of generating a good composition, you can just test different ones if you don't know, making the prompt really basic and focusing more on the inpainting, and if you aren't getting what you're looking for at all, maybe it is time to create new control net references or change strategy. For example, in this sketch, I moved on to painting over a generation that had some parts right to create a better starting image. Then I looked at the last chance I had given Stable Diffusion to see that it just generated what I wanted, but I still use the photobashed reference. And now step 4. In painting and Photoshop. This is the hardest and more important part of the process. You will probably spend the most amount of time in here, mainly depending on the fidelity you're looking for and a little bit of luck with your AI generations. The process is very similar in all cases, but at the same time it is really different. What I mean is, change stuff you don't like, then use AI to improve your changes. But how you do those changes or what you want to change will be very different for every image. I will go over some of the hardest parts to correct on every image, as well as walking you through the process of creating the volleyball image, as it was the one that got the best feedback. Thank you for that. As I said, as a starting base, I picked this image. From here, I see that I don't like a few things. The first one is that the ball looks too big. This is my bad, as I painted it like this in the segmentation mask. I'm gonna select it, make it smaller, and then fill the gap with content aware. If you have the latest version of Photoshop, this will be too easy for you. By the way, I'm not gonna go in depth on how Photoshop works. If you want a more specific tutorial on using it, then I'll make it depending on how many people ask for it. But for now, I will use pretty basic stuff that pretty much all photo editing software has and that is really easy to learn. Next, I'll create the net. For this, I will go and find an image online, transform it to match what I need, and done. You don't have to make it be a perfect blend or anything, just erase the parts that shouldn't be there, like the net in front of the main subject. I will also take out the net in front of this guy's face, so the AI doesn't have much trouble understanding what it is. I will add it back later if necessary. There are other things that don't really match what I want for this image, like the water on the top, and I will also paint the lines that mark the volleyball field. 
Another example of this would be in the gun image, where I actually had to use Photoshop to make 1. a better target dummy, 2. put the bullet in, which by the way, if you ever need to pose something in a very specific way like I did here, you can go to Sketchfab and look up, for example in this case, bullet, then pick the one that you like and pose it to match your image. Here I just took a screenshot and then imported it into Photoshop. And finally I used online images for the fire effect and the smoke. Even a more extreme example is this robot, where I ended up photo bashing a main part of the image. Ok, I'll export this image as PNG and use it as a base to work in the InPaint tab for now. The process here is fairly straightforward. InPaint stuff one by one until you get the result you're looking for. I import the open pose reference we made and use it to create better results while inpainting people. And even more so in the main character with a complex pose. I just inpaint one by one. If I feel like the pose is a little meh, I will use open pose to see if it helps. And if it doesn't, I will lower the weight or even take it out completely. For the main character, I used a low denoising strength and just looked for it to be in better focus. Once I have that done, move on to the next and so forth. Only Masked did a pretty good job in this case, even though you're risking getting a character that doesn't really fit the perspective. If you need your characters to be a Laura or embedding trained, this is the time to use it. Here in the first image, I actually painted both characters to have a better base first, and then painted them one at a time, using obviously their corresponding Laura. And same thing with this image, where I wanted to put a CSGO skin as the main character, so I needed to use this Soldier 76 Laura, and then just painted this Samurai-an. Continuing with the volleyball example, one thing I would like to keep are the colors of the characters. Our main character is dressed in blue, so the other team should be wearing red, to give emphasis to the fact that they are on opposite teams. I didn't mind the shirt of this girl not being red as long as the pants were. Even still, if I wanted to, I could change the color easily in Photoshop. Now repeat the process for this one, keeping in mind that the open pose might be helping or hurting. The last guy I wanted to change was this one, as it really stood out and did not match the perspective at all. I used the whole picture and laden noise to see if it generated something that matched the perspective better, even if it wasn't what I was looking for. And then I used that generated image as reference in the original mode. There is no need to have inpainting do the job perfect directly. You can find a good enough generation and then inpaint on top of that or even change it manually to go from there. A good example of this is returning to our sword image, where I actually had to combine two different sword generations to get something I liked. And now that I had the guy in a pose I liked, I just went into Photoshop and make adjustments, changing the shirt's color with a hue layer, also fixing the sand really quickly by painting the parts I didn't like using the colors next to the bad areas. I just changed the parts that could look like they were not sand to the AI. Why? Well, because the next step is changing the sound for a better one. We will create a mask for every character and the volleyball. Then leave the background, including the net, as an inpainting area. You have some ways to create this mask based on the image you have. I usually create a quick mask by painting with a brush, even though it might not be the best way, as it isn't really precise. Not that it should be super good, but sometimes I'm a little too lazy while masking. If you don't want to do it manually, this trick could help you. If you're lucky and your image isn't too overloaded, just input it into to control net and select the segmentation model, and you can use the O fate 20 k preprocessor. Click Allow Preview and then hit the explosion icon. This will try to find what everything in your image is, making a mask for you. Now you just go into Photoshop and change the character masks for black and the background for white. Also you can correct the things that are poorly done. We will go into InPaint Upload, put the image with the corrected changes up here and the new created mask down here. It will act as an InPaint mask to change only the background. I use whole picture for this. Also the sun that I already had is not so bad. Even the net and ground marks are good, so I'm going to use a low denoising strength like 40 or 30. Also I will use the segmentation model for this, with like 75 percent of control weight. Just play with the mask blur depending on how precise your original mask was. And make sure that the background is all properly changed. Don't worry too much about messing up your characters as you can later overlay them in Photoshop like nothing happened. These are the before and after of the other images following this same process. Here you can see that my mask was a little too white but ended up being easy to correct. In this case I have the same problem. I should probably start using my own tips. How about that? Clean up time again. But this time I'll try to clean up everything more accurately, as these parts of the image will stay like this until I upscale. I want them as clean as possible. For this I will use the clone stamp tool and erase the parts I don't like, this weird thing close to the hand or this tail looking thing on the girl here. Something I usually don't care about are shadows. The floor here doesn't have shadows that make sense, but I don't really mind that. You could create those in Photoshop and then make them better with AI, but I'm 
too lazy for that. What I did was just repair the parts that really stood out. That way people don't think about the shadows when they see the image. If you have some weird stuff in the image that you don't like, now it's the time to change it. But be careful, because depending on how you want to upscale it or even how many times you want to upscale this image, you may want to save some efforts for later. For example, this is the clean tap version of the Kazuma image I did before the first upscale. And this is the upscaled version. So the hands I bothered correcting are now, well, that. And I will have to make some heavy changes on Kazuma as he started doing some makeup and wears an earring now. Now we repeat the same process we did for every character, but this time changing only the face. Make sure to use only mask to use the most resolution possible. This way you will avoid undefined or distorted faces. If you feel like the lighting or pose is off, increase the only mask padding pixels to give AI a little more context when generating. And now we can move into the final step. Upscaling and post-processing. Upscaling. I'm still not super good at this, but I have tried some stuff, even though I haven't found a way that works perfectly for everything. So for now, depending on the image you want to create, you will use one method over the other. We want to use different types of upscaling. As these generations get really complex and stable diffusion starts to misunderstand what's happening. Sometimes to the point where it is really hard to upscale in normal image to image without a super low denoising strength. If you want to upscale more than once and your image is fairly simple to describe, then you can try upscaling it by two in normal image to image. If not, then you can try the tile model on ControlNet with the ultimate as the upscale script like we did in the last video. If you're looking for a simple, not very good upscaling, then just use the extra tab with the ultra sharp upscaler. When I'm looking for a good image, I use all of the above and then mix all the results together with the parts I like the most. In the volleyball image, I upscaled once with the tile model and these parameters. Then the faces got a little weird so I went into inpainting and fixed them. Super important to use only mask if you don't want to downscale the whole image again. I also went into Photoshop and did a little bit of post-processing, like adding some motion blur to the hair and hands and the opposite team, or raising the contrast of the image and some other little adjustments. These were done using the camera raw filter on Photoshop, but you can also use layers. Which by the way, thanks to Storm or Storm <laughs> for reminding me that this existed. I will leave their Twitter name in the description so you can go follow them. They post some really cool landscape art, also helped a lot giving upscaling tips in the comments. So if you really care about upscaling, I suggest just you look up their profile. After the whole image was completed, I brought it back into Stable Diffusion and upscaled it again, this time with ControlNet. But instead of 20 or 25 sampling steps like usual, I used 80. Found out that in image to image, you can afford to use a lot of sampling steps. This will add some very nice minor details. Be careful with the artifacts it produces though. I had to go into Photoshop again and then left out the artifacts or the parts that I wasn't interested in. This was my original final image and this one adding the 80 steps details. Another interesting example here is the Konosuba image. I copied the same prompt I used at the very beginning by changing the ants for breaks, not using latent couple this time. And by the way, this was only a test. I still have to see if adding break here is worth anything. I don't think so. I don't know how to prompt for the tile upscaler yet. This was the result I got. After a while working on it, I ended up with this. Then re-upscaled it again plus a Laura to add detail. I'll give you the link to it in the description. I haven't tried it much yet though. Just thought it was an interesting experiment. Then I mixed the two upscalers scales to get detail on parts that didn't have any before, getting a per 2 upscaling and not a per 4, but with really nice quality. For the short image, I upscaled it with extras and control net, then mixed the best part of both to create what I needed. Here I wanted to do some extra post processing like adjusting the contrast, putting in some motion blur or movement effect on the blade and the body. It didn't turn out great, but that's my own skill issue. And the robot thing, I didn't even bother upscaling. <laughs> As thanks for staying until now, and while you click on this video down here, I'll show you how I quickly added the umbrella onto the Kazuma image. I basically painted a sketch to use as a scribble model, and invented it with a custom mask made in Photoshop. Then used latent upscale and a simple prompt, and voila! Hope the video helped, and thank you so much for watching! See.